Do you want? Greetings and welcome to Mount Olympus. I am Hercules Invictus and today I am greatly honored to bring you the Enchanted Self with Dr. Barbara Becker-Holstein. Greetings and welcome, Barbara. How are you? I am fine and it's great to be back with you, Hercules. We missed a couple of months, but here we are again. And I thought today it would be fun if we looked at a short series of books that I've been doing in the last few months. These books are really workbooks. They are books that have a number of issues that girls face. Why did I pick girls? Well, a lot of my work over the years has been with young women, older women, kids, and it has focused around girls because I have felt that in the beginning days when I became a psychologist and uh, had a practice, that there had been a lot more research on men and how they relate than on women. That may not be true anymore, but it got me started focusing on women. And that has carried on in a lot of my books and films and plays. And that's just the way it is. And of course, I'm a woman, so I find it very interesting and maybe helpful to bring to the public a better understanding of the difficulties that women face. Certainly they are uh, apparent when you go to work and are paid less than a man in an equivalent job, which I'll back up and tell about myself once, but they can be more subtle and be the type of thing where a woman may find herself just being put down a little bit while the men at that particular business or company joke in the corner or something or talk sports and don't even realize that the woman is somehow being um, minimized. It, it's happened to me. I know it happens. Now, back to when I earned less money, I was a school psychologist after being a learning, uh, learning consultant. Learning mm -hmm. consultants do a lot of testing while a school psychologist also does that, but more IQ testing than things like reading. And usually they've had more courses in uh, behavioral activities and the mind and so on. And so I moved from being the learning consultant to the um, school psychologist, and I was on my way to an independent practice. The school system should have made my salary exactly the same as the fellow who also was another school psychologist in the town as soon as I stopped doing learning testing. But guess what? what? They never bothered. <laughs> That's sad. That is, yes. that is very sad. And I had to go in. I went in and I spoke to the superintendent of schools. And I was... Uh, polite and very polite and he was very polite and he said it was very interesting and he hasn't he didn't really realize it and he would bring it up at the board guess what happened nothing I shut his desk so then I went to uh, a lawyer through the New Jersey Teachers Association which I belong to rightfully and um he stepped in. Needless to stay, say, because he stepped in, eventually it was resolved and I got one check that made up the difference of like a year and a half. Okay, so it was it worked out. But if you think about it, I had the opportunity of a free lawyer and I had the opportunity of a lot of schooling I was highly educated. I had a father who was a superintendent of schools and certainly knew how to advise me. And a husband who was a psychologist who certainly wanted to have um, everything evened out and you know knew the game better than I did. But if you think about it, 
most women don't have those sorts of opportunities, even in today's world, you know, of free legal advice and so on. So it's never quite even, but, but whether it's even or not, girls go into growing up the early stages of puberty and the early stages of perhaps falling in love a little differently than guys, you know, we're just Obviously, we're not the same. Who would want us to be the same? You know, we have different DNAs and different uh, different hormones to some extent, and that's the way it is. So I thought, as I began to hear about all the pandemic research, that I could offer something. The research had been showing for the last few months that a lot of girls have been quite cut off, depressed, lonely, and at times anxious and depressed, as I said, depressed. And even worse than that, at times, there have been some suicides. It's very serious. I think the pandemic has suffer uh, suffered for the girls in a way a little differently than the boys in the sense that girls are so connected to best friends and the gossip of the day and what's new and that's girly, you know, and that's why boys can make fun of it. Oh, you're so girly, you know, but that's within the nature of being female. And while the boys suffered a lot too, but going out and playing baseball uh, in the local backyard may have been somewhat soothing to a fellow where if a girl really lost her best friend because she lived a couple of miles away and nobody was going anywhere, might have felt depressed. You know, so you're dealing with different variables. That's what got me started. I ended up so far, I can't believe it. I know this uh, because I have this background that makes things fuzzy, but- Me too. Yeah. I actually ended up writing five different small books. Wow, that is all, I mean, this was really amazing to myself. And we'll get some pictures up on the site um, because I don't know, I, I really can't get the fuzz out. Yeah, it's not coming into focus very well. Yes, I thought I'd talk a little bit and bring up a couple of examples from each one. Um, the they are different. They have different age levels, more or less. Um, and it ends uh, with a book that's called right now, Looking Good and Feeling Good. And we put that as the last little book because it's so hopeful. It really isn't designed to do anything but help increase positive feelings and attitudes and um, desires and dreams of girls um, as they move toward uh, adolescence. And um, while some of the earlier books have some of the, none of them are sad or depressing, but well, the best thing I can do is just reality check. Let's go through this one, which says changes. And on the cover, it says resilience and self-esteem for girls, then changes. And the girl is supposed to be holding a pen and she's writing. And she says, number one, we moved. Number two, there are changes. Number three, school started. Number four, friends, I'm not sure. Number five, I'm in love. Number six, a secret diary. And number seven, a perfect day. So all of these things are different issues that different girls may have at different times. So let's just take a look. And I think this, this book is designed, let me just look in the cover and um, tell you that um, this book 
is designed, I think, toward the end, and maybe the next book to the the one feeling good. Okay, I was going to ask that where yeah. the sequence was because that's a great ending, a, a perfect day. That is a great. Yes, yes, ending. yes, it is. So the first part is moving, and if uh, anyone has experienced moving as a child, it can be very, very difficult. So the girl is talking. Um, who is keeping this book? No, I'm so <laughs> book. I'm making a mistake. Okay. The girl is talking about moving, but she is just any girl, you know, right now. She is a character in this book. And she says, we've moved. I've lost my best friend, Angela, and the world I know. I have to leave Paul, even though he was too short, and I wasn't sure I loved him anymore. I feel like I'm in a dream. The house is so ugly. What might made my parents buy a great big old Victorian house with stained glass windows and some rooms added on the back that didn't even go with the house? So weird. Do you understand how terrible and lost I feel? Okay, so there may not be another girl or even a real live girl that would say exactly what this girl said, but here are now the discussion and thought questions. Have you ever moved? Probably the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. What did you feel? There should be some response. How did you start to adjust? Legitimate question because most of us do adjust once we've moved. Do you have any thoughts about who the girl is reaching out to on her cell phone or if she makes a video of herself? Is she just keeping her diary on the cell phone? Because you see in the picture, she's holding a phone. Um, who would you reach out to in your circumstances if you had to? And then there's some basically blank pages where it says, write a poem, create a list, or ask a question, write a play, or say what you really think, draw a picture, take a selfie, or make your own selfie film. So now the girl who's using this workbook has a chance. She may be want to keep it very private so the book may be big enough to just keep some secret notes or draw a little picture or write a little poem mm -hmm. or the book may not be sufficient and she'll do it her way maybe she will make a selfie film that she then says to her parents um if you want to see what i've done you know with my phone i'm inviting you to a cinema we're going to have on the weekend, of course, with popcorn. <laughs> and, um, I'll even let my little brother and sister come. Who knows where some of this stuff could lead, you know, in terms of family life, in terms of reaching out a little bit to family members and even grandparents. Or it can be very private and just stuff that never, never leaves this little workbook. So these are these are interactive uh, books, and uh, they're uniquely tailored uh, uh, to the individual choices being uh, universal. So that that is very that's very clever, and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to reading them. Yes, I'll make sure that they get sent to you. You'll get a whole package. Maybe your wife will even get a kick out of some of them. I'm sure she will. Yeah. Um, oh, here we're up to the perfect day. That's a neat one. I'll just read it briefly. Today was the most perfect day of my life. I'm with my aunt. I slept so long and felt so good when I got up. When I went downstairs, Aunt Grace had homemade blueberry muffins on the table. She offered me milk coffee. At home, I never get that. After breakfast, we walked around the farm. She showed me the milking cows. They had just been milked and were heading out to the pasture. 
Some of them had their calves with them. It was so cute to see them walking side by side. She showed me the chickens and the pigs. The chickens were busy pecking at their food and the pigs were rolling in the dirt. And there was a whole bunch of kittens running around the barn chasing each other. I felt like I was in a perfect world where all the animals and the people are happy and no one's hurting anyone. It was almost like being in a dream. I started to run and dance in the sunlight. How my aunt told me some family secrets. Secrets are my favorite thing. I have ancestors were American Indians. I also have ancestors that were Jewish. I have an ancestor that was a slave. I am shocked. Why didn't my mother tell me? How big can, a fam can family secrets be? When we got back to the farm, we sat on the porch and my aunt showed me pictures of my ancestors. I am still in shock. How could my mother never tell me anything? And then we go on to the discussion questions. How do you feel about secrets? Should there be secrets in a family? What about our own feelings and thoughts? Is it okay to keep them as secrets? And then again, the blank pages, write a play or say what you really think, draw a picture, take a selfie. Um, through, you know, so it's the same idea, which makes it personalized to the reader. And um, you may recognize some of this stuff that the girl says, and, and it is in my films, um, many of these passages, and in the books that have been published by Skyhorse Press of uh, the diaries of the girls. So, um, I'm sort of taking some of my own stuff and finding another vessel to help it be used to help these girls mature and feel more comfortable about themselves. And I, I like how this is a progression and it's moving forward in time. And I suspect it'll cul culminate in a book for young women. <laughs> yeah, probably will. You're probably right. I'll mention that, uh, something about that later. Um, toward the end of the book, I want to make sure in all of these that we end on a positive note kind of thing. So the girl is, who's using the book is asked, well, she's going to be asked about things that make her happy instead of something that may be evocative toward the negative. Um, and so this imaginary girl says um, something about being happy. And uh, then again, write a poem or uh, create a list, ask a question. And she's also asked um, to talk about things that make her sad if she wishes. And I explain a little bit that these different states of mind are normal you know, so that we can feel very sad. And 10 minutes later, we can change our moods. In fact, it's much easier to change a mood sometimes than to change a habit, you know? And uh, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately sometimes. Um, and I do share a little bit from my own life, like here where I ask about things that make me sad, I say, when I was young, I was very sad, and this is all true. I wanted to take piano lessons. When I clearly shared that with my parents, time was passing and I really needed to find lessons. Finally, they found a teacher, but you know what? They missed the window and I did because I really wanted the lessons when I was around nine mm -hmm. and I got them when I was turning 13, I wasn't in the same place, you know? So sometimes that's just the way it is. You know, we miss the moment. Um, okay, and then we're toward the end of this first, this particular book. Uh, and she's asked, the reader has asked, um, or talked to about 
that sometimes we can be afraid, uh, but the very, and then toward the end, things I like to do, let's get back to what you really enjoy. Okay, you don't like some things, you can mention them too and um, get them off of your mind. And in the end, I ask if you could change the whole world. If you could change the world in any way you wanted, what would you change? And if you have ideas on how to change what you see is wrong, please list those ideas. I hope you will put on your thinking cap and really give some thought to how you would change the world. You are our future. Whether you think of yourself that way or not, with opportunities for education, mentors, time to grow up and time to thrive, you can become one of the hero heroines of our time. You may invent something that only you could do or help people with special training that you get to save lives or discover something that leads to better medicine or ways of living. I can't wait to read what you want to change and how it could be changed. And I give my address and then there's one last section uh, for them to make notes. And that's that's the example of one of the books. Wow, that is amazing. I, I am very impressed, Barbara. And you're an impressive person who's impressed me. <laughs> but that is so, so very great. Uh, that is not just positive, but it's phenomenally positive. And, and again, it, it, it tells a story and then it draws someone into the story uh, and encourages them to tell their own story. So that, that is fantastic. Yes. Yes, you're right. It is. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. I don't feel that way most of the time because, you know, when you're creating, creating you're involved in the creation. Um, but yes, I'm trying to have something that gives more than one gateway, mm -hmm. not only to different girls with different styles, but even the same girl going through this you know, she might write one poem and she doesn't want to really do the rest, but she'll read the whole book. Someone else may like doing a lot of art from it and maybe isn't even that interested in, okay, I read a couple of the stories, I get the point, but I love the artwork. You know, so there's many, many avenues that may be followed. And that's important because we come out of something like the pandemic or just just living with so many different facets in our own personalities, even. And you're encouraging not just one type of creativity, but whatever creativity they, they care to cultivate and share. And uh, I personally believe that creativity is almost this divine uh, faculty because you're taking something that doesn't exist, something that's in your mind, and through your creativity, uh, you're bringing it into being here in the physical world. And if we look around ourselves, everything uh, surrounding us and everything we speak started out in someone's imagination. So that's how powerful the imagination is. And uh, it's great that you're encouraging people to be creative. Yes, I agree. And I think for me, even personally, I think I'm happiest oftentimes when I'm creating you know, Me too. really, really, it's so exciting. Um, when we did the TV shows together. Those were fun. And I, yeah. I back on that time with a lot of fondness. I know. It was very exciting. You know, um, many times I had you as a guest and sometimes you had me. Sometimes we were with other people. But I remember that we were sitting on this kind of nothing much uh, stage with maybe a couple of fake plants and a curtain. I don't remember much else. And I had brought some fake flowers each time. And I would talk about something like, oh, how I wish that you would come and visit me. And I was talking about you um, at the time because we'll have such an interesting talk and you know it'll be fun and meanwhile nothing's really happening and then all of a sudden out of the blue there's like a a knock 
<laughs> and I'm supposed to be sort of sitting in the forest, so I don't know what's getting knocked. But of course, that was the door somehow to your entranceway. It was just fun. Yes, it was. It was a lot, it was a lot of fun, and I miss it. And uh, unfortunately, that studio didn't survive the pandemic. No. I, I yeah. went after the pandemic and lifted somewhat uh, to New York and I was in the area. So if you're, let me drop by the studio and say hello. And nope, it, the building was there, but the studio wasn't anymore. Oh, well, I think the man that owned it may have been fairly senior. Mm. But uh, yeah, so a lot of things didn't make it. But it's good that those things happen. They happen to us. They live on in our memories. They live on the memories of people who are right. watching us. And uh, uh, bits and pieces of it survive in social media. Um, so, again, it happened and it's still available to us in some form or fashion. That's right. That's right. Yes. I'm just looking at uh, in one of the other books where the little story is I need a miracle and um, miracles also are so incredible. I just had a, a reporter ask me to talk about um, luck and we were talking about is luck, luck is, you know, <laughs> what is it? And I think that luck, real luck is a miracle. I think that much of what we achieve and have happened, we can do get there with lots of training and mm -hmm. people supporting us. I'm not sure that I would call that luck, but there is really also luck when somebody thinks they have severe cancer one day and then the x-ray the next week doesn't show any. That's that's different. Yes. And I think we have this amazing uh, capacity as we live in the world as we know it, that we have miracles and we have activities that we must do. And it's it's just so interesting. And lots of times, somehow the earth seems to move to correct something and we get off the hook, you know, we're so afraid. And then the right person comes yeah. into our lives or the right medicine. That's yes, I, I always thank the universe for things that I know were beyond my power to do, but yes. then, anyway, I, I'm very grateful. Uh, back in the days of, uh, uh, the ancient Greeks in, near the Acropolis, uh, the Parthenon, uh, the Temple of Athena, uh, near the Rock of Ares, there was a shrine to the unacknowledged uh, deity. And the ancient Greeks at the time, if they didn't know who to thank, because it, it just happened and there was no calling card left uh, from the Olympians that, you know, I, Zeus, did this or, you know, whatever, they would thank uh, the, the god that they couldn't name uh, because miraculous things do happen. And uh, uh, I'm very grateful for all the miracles in my uh, life. I am too. I am. So this little story, and now this book is angst. So this uh, bears in mind that becoming a young teenager is an all pleasure. There's lots of bad moods and crankiness and disappointments. So in her list on the cover, it says, I don't like the way I look in the mirror. I feel so miserable and so alone. Sometimes things hurt so much. I need my mom. Am I weird? I'm afraid nobody in my new school will like me. All legitimate stuff that may not happen to everyone, but probably at least one thing on the list happens to almost everybody. Uh huh. So I need a miracle. Most of us at one time or another wish a miracle would happen. We find ourselves in a difficult situation or hurtful or worrisome, and we simply can't seem to find a way out. Calling on a miracle is normal and it can reduce the stress of the moment. However, it may even be more helpful 
to go over the problem with someone you trust and see if there's a way to move ahead with a solution. For example, when I was 12, we moved and the new me, uh, the new school seemed to have placed me randomly in certain classes that were too easy for me. I felt miserable as I had worked so hard in the sixth grade and I liked the pace of somewhat challenging classes. I spoke to my father and he suggested I talk to my guidance counselor. I did and she changed my classes. I was thrilled and I didn't need a miracle after all. Or you could say a miracle happened. Life was good again. And then there are the blank pages for the kid. And um, again in the back, a place to talk about yourself and to make changes to the world. So my assumption is that one girl might only do one but workbook. You know, she might do the one more geared if she's young, uh, eight, four, eight, nine, and ten years, ten year olds, or the couple that are more for someone maybe 12, 13, 14. But do they have to do all four or five? No, no. And it would be nice and interesting just to see what they say, but that's not the point. It's not about me. It's about them getting something out of the workbook process. And it's designed so that they easily can if they so wish. Yes, yes. A couple of them we have on ebook now so that um, I couldn't really even bring those to show you. Probably we'll try to get all of them on. The good thing about that is they can print out uh, their own paper, you know, and if they have nine by 12 paper and a printer at home, they can access some of what they want to do even more comfortably than using the pages that we left for them. Have you thought of putting together a school program that incorporates uh, these uh, books and some of your other uh, writings and practices? Because it, what you're doing is very comprehensive. Over time, yes, you're working on some big jigsaw puzzle. And I think enough of the pieces are there where you could put together a, a package and- Yes, uh, yes. I would love to, but I would need a miracle. I would need to know, you know, somebody who was head of um, an English department and a big, you know, in a school and had some capacities to put in a gifted, well, not that the kids have to be gifted, but something off track that, you know, could take up time and effort right. and be accepted. Um, I would need that miracle. Oh, let, let's hope a miracle does happen. Yeah, I will yeah. to keep my ears and eyes open for yes, yes. those qualifications, and I will bring it to their attention if they cross my path. Thank you. Yes. I did have an opportunity years ago where I had brought um, my first little book, I'm a girl, I'm smart, and I know everything, to a public school in um I can't even remember the town, towards South Jersey, and um, the teacher who was doing it bought enough books so each girl had a book. And then I came and spoke four or five times with the class. Wow. It was great, you know, but and, um, not too much that I can do with it now in the sense that um, I never got releases. Um, I certainly, you know, I can in a general way look over my notes and Re recreate what the girls had to say, but it's much more interesting when you get the right releases from parents and kids, right. and you can really pull together some research, you know, and follow it. It'd be great. Yeah. Something that uh, comes to mind, I don't know if this will be a miracle or not, uh, but one of the things I do is uh, I work in enrichment programs, and here, uh, all the schools uh, below middle school, uh, you know, I guess all the grammar schools and kindergartens have enrichment uh, programs. And usually they run them uh, for the kids who are waiting for their parents to pick them up uh, like yes. an hour or so after school uh, finishes. And uh, they remunerate you for your time very uh, generously. And you could propose uh, programs. 
and then they put the programs in the catalog and then the parents uh, um, can refer their kids to whatever program they like. And as long as a minimum number is enrolled in the program, you can continue it uh, there in the school. So because I'm into Greek mythology, as you know, uh, I have Greek mythology programs now running in several schools, everything from Greek mythology 101, where they learn the basics, uh, to interactive adventures where they could join Jason in the Argonauts or join Atalanta in the Amazons, you know, on, on different uh, adventures. And the adventures all, again, stimulate creativity. They, they stimulate the imagination. Uh, and they have them looking for, like, uh, solutions, both as individuals and as part of a team. So I think what you're sharing here would be perfect in uh, in such an environment. And if you want to get beyond doing it yourself, you can basically cultivate it and develop the materials and, uh, you know, like franchise it out or something. That would be great. Yes. And uh, I'm thinking that if I can uh, find the right entrance way, uh, I probably should send a little letter or somehow find out um, with the with NEA, the um, na the state school association, um, I think it's NEA. Anyway, whatever it is that you know, they have a newsletter, they have a magazine, and I would um, it might be good to try to pull a little story together once I have um, some of these books out in the kids' hands and get some letters back and things like that, make it, you know, quite real. Yeah, this is the beginning of something. You're right. I feel that very strongly. Yes, yes. And as far as young women, I started during this, the past four months. Um, I don't know if part of it was a recovery project from getting knee surgery, but I started to write a book that remains decidedly unfinished at the moment, but it would start with uh, young women really of college age and take them through some of the ups and downs of going through life really. And it might end up more than one book and I thought it would be very interesting to have somehow in the side part of the page on many pages, what was actually happening in the world at the time so that you get a sense of how people live in their own lives at the same time where one, sometimes momentous things are happening but we're not even processing or thinking or knowing about them, you know? And the reason why this seems so important to me now is the whole um, ridiculous, in my opinion, unfair thing that came up around um, who has the rights to make decisions on one's yeah. body. And uh, that, you know, this really has thrown a, um, just just taken women backwards in many, many ways, at least in the ways, the imposition on the concept of one's own body and who's making a decision. Yeah, that that is something that uh, we're going backwards on in leaps and bounds. Yeah, and um, and the books, you know, certain books, not certain towns, certain states, not wanting to have certain books, not wanting to give a full history of what life was like uh, with slaves, without slaves, whatever it is, the Indians, you know, all of these things are factors that have gigantic proportions and yet people are trying to still live their ordinary lives. So it's very complex. I don't know whether I'll 
finish this book or whether it will end up maybe a little um, novella, you know, that just hints at certain things. But that's what I was working on around young women. That sounds fascinating. And, and yeah, there too, I'd love to read it when you're finished it. Well, I, I if you if you want to read it, if you have the guts to read it, I have the I guts. Send, to... Yes, I will. There, no man has read it. You will be the only man. I, I'm greatly honored. And um, it starts off with a girl, three girls in college, and you'll see how far I got with it. Oh yeah, I love that. That's a great idea. Oh, yes, I'm ex more excited about that than um, almost anything else tonight, because uh, even my husband's indifferent. You know, I guess he'll read it maybe someday if it's going to be published. All right, let's look at one more and then we'll call it a night. This is I'm smart. So um, this is moving towards a sense of independence, a sense of being uh knowing how to to move through life successfully and her list on the front says looking good feeling good the best day ever by myself freedom and fun grown-ups have stuff to learn i'm smart i know so much my feelings were hurt again i'm sure pretty much everyone could at least have one thing from that list most you of them. And, uh, and again, even though your books are written for women and uh, girls, there is something very universal about them that touches uh, our humanity. So right. although not everything in your books applies to, to me personally, because uh, right. uh, I'm the wrong gender, uh, still the universal human lessons in your books uh, do apply to all people, I believe, and I benefited from reading them. Good. Good. I, I appreciate that. So here is I have a crush on a boy. Now I put this in one form or another in almost everything I write because I feel in our culture, not in the more religious cultures where boys and girls can't even really meet each other, but in the way Americans live, there's usually a crush. Mm -hmm. if, oftentimes by third grade or whenever it happens. So I told my grandmother my secret and now I'm telling you, I have a crush on a boy named Paul. I don't think he even knows I exist. Actually, Angela sits next to him. I told her and she said she has had crushes on and off for years. And my grandmother told me it's normal and part of growing up. But still, I was shocked, and no one ever made me feel jumpy inside until Paul. I'm telling you because I want you to know it's okay to have a crush. I imagine marrying Paul someday, and we will have four kids and maybe two dogs, two cats, and I think a parrot. I told my mom also, and she said, you won't marry him. By the time you grow up, you'll have other crushes. I was so angry at her. But you might, she might be right. So my advice to you is to tell at least one person you trust so you don't keep a secret that just makes you confused. In fact, you can do that about anything strange or confusing. Very well said. Yes, and it is, uh, we've all carried secrets at times and a secret can be a big heavy mess, you know? So, uh, yeah, so each of these books, you know, repeat in some form some of the more major psychological uh, steps that I believe people have to take on the way to maturity. Now, here's, I'm going to re read you this one. This will be the last because it goes with what we were talking about for the young women. Growing up, I don't want to stay home during the day when I grow up. I'm going to really be somebody when I'm older. I'm not going to let anybody trap me inside a house with nothing to do but chores and laundry. I'll get the right education. If I'm going to be an actress, then I'll get to that training. If I'm going to be something else, I'll do whatever it takes. I'm not going to be outside with a clothes basket. 
hanging the clothes. My kids can hang the wash while I do more important things. I'm going to be somebody. No one's going to stop me. I'm not sure what I'll do for a living because so many things excite me, but someday I'll know. The world needs help, and I want to be one of the helpers. When I told my mom, she gave me a big hug and kiss and said, you go, girl. I'll help you in any way I can. I felt so good inside and loved and ready for my future. And that's the truth. Thank you. That was wonderful. And that's, an, that's an, a very empowering way to end today's program as yes, well. Yes, yes, it is. It is. Now, how can people contact you and how can they yes. access all these wonderful books? The books are all on sale. Uh, the best way to contact me and to find everything I've ever written that's public is to go to enchantedself.com. That's where all my books are listed. And then you can buy anything you want. Of course, uh, you can skip from there um, to one of them to wherever you want to buy your books. Um, and uh, they're all listed. If you want to write to me, it's barbara.holstein at gmail.com. And I think, um, you know, between enchantedself.com and barbara.holstein at gmail.com, I can't hide from you, so you might as well write to me. So... Yes, this has uh, been fun. Thanks for uh, setting up the Zoom again. And uh, we'll make this go through to eventually to uh, a couple of other places um, where it can be seen. I look forward to that. I'll have the, uh, the, the rough cut, I guess we'll call it, yes. by tomorrow. And I will send you the files so that you can do with them as you wish. Yes, great. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. You're awesome. You're incredible. I'm very grateful that our paths are crossed and continue to intertwine. Yes. And I wish you success with all your endeavors. And I say the same to you. And I wish you success and good health. Feel good. You too. Take care. Thank you. Thank you to our wonderful audience. Uh, until next time, joyous journeys. <laughs>